Welcome back. Next, we'll take a look at how to do dictionary lookups. So this is all about how we can look up a value based off a specific key in a dictionary or vice versa. So looking up specific keys based off values. So let's first look at how we can do key lookups. So you can see here we're using functional syntax. So with and without the brackets here, we can use both. And we simply just pass the, the key we want to retrieve the value for. So we'll call dictionary first just to show what a dictionary was. So we had John, Steve and Rachel and whether we pass John with or without the square brackets, we get the value returned, which is 20. And then you can see when we pass Sarah, Sarah does, doesn't exist in the dictionary and we get a null of the value type returned when that happens. Um, if we try and pass a key that's a different type, so instead of a symbol here, I'm trying to call a string, I get a type error. So we need to make sure the type matches. And we can also pass multiple keys at once. So instead of just passing a singular key here, we're passing four. So John, Rachel, Sarah, Rachel. And you see, I get the values returned. And I'm calling Rachel twice here. So I get 22 returned twice. 20 for John and then null for Sarah as she doesn't exist in the dictionary. So that's very useful to us. So the short exercise here, so using the food dictionary, so we defined that in the previous exercise, find the value corresponding with milk. Um, and once you're okay with that, let's move on and do the reverse lookup of that. So this is trying to look up certain keys based on the values. And the way we do that is very similar to how we operate on lists. Um, so we use the find operator. So remember when we have a list here, we can pass the list on the left and then the lookup value on the right hand side and we're able to retrieve the index that that value occurred at. So we can do something very similar with dictionary. So we've got our dictionary on the left and then we're saying look up the value 20 and then we're using 24 here as well. So when we look up 20, we get John returned when we look up 24, 24 doesn't exist. So we get a null symbol returned. Okay. And then we've got another exercise here, create a birth month dictionary um, for John, Steve and Rachel, and then map them to Jan, Sept and October accordingly. So it wants you to store the keys, which is John, Steve and Rachel as symbols, and then these months as strings. And then you'll be using both the key lookup and the reverse lookup for these two. So have a go at that. And once you're happy with that, let's move on and look at amending dictionaries. So up to now, we've learned how to create dictionaries and also look up in them. Um, and then with amending, there's a lot of similarities with how we amend and operate on lists, which should be no surprise really, as a dictionary is really just two lists. So first, if we want to update a dictionary, how can we do that? So we use our colon value. Um, so this is doing explicit reassignment. So it's taking our key that existed before Rachel and we're just overriding that to be the value of 26 rather than 22. So you see here, 22 has been replaced with 26. So pretty straightforward and looks similar to how we operate on lists. If we wanted to, instead of completely overriding this value, just adjusting it, so either applying some function to it, like um, one of our primitives. So in this case, we want to decrease John's age by one. We can simply pass the minus out in front. So if we run this, you'll see beforehand John was 19 and then afterwards he's 18. And this here is just the shorthand way of doing it. And this here is more explicitly. So it's the exact same. Thing. You're just taking the dictionary entry of John and reducing it by one. Okay. So have a go with this exercise. So using the birth month dictionary from the previous exercise, we want you to update Steve's birth month to this shorthand for August. Okay. Um, next, how can we remove entries? So again, very similar to lists, we use the drop operator, which is this underscore character. So again, we're showing with a list here. We remember we passed the numeric value out in front. So this would take away the first two values. So if we have a dictionary, how can we do something similar? So our list here has dropped the first two values, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then if we have a dictionary here of six um, key value pairs, we can pass the keys here explicitly. So if I want to drop Tom and Jane, I can do that. So dropping Tom and Jane, I've only got the other four. Um, in the second example here, I'm just dropping Joanne. And then in this third example here, I'm showing that if I try and drop something like Sarah um, and Mark, 
and Mark doesn't actually exist, I don't get an error. It just doesn't have an effect um, because Mark doesn't exist. And then I can pass the entire list of keys here as well as an option, which would leave me with nothing. Okay. Um, so return the birth month dictionary without the entry for John. So pretty straightforward. Have a go with that. And then just two more final operations here. First one here is subsetting entries. Remember we had our take operator. So it's the equivalent of the drop one. So when we want to drop from a list, we use the underscore. When we want to select, we can use take, which is this hash character. So again, we just pass the keys explicitly in front that we want to take. So I'm just getting Tom and Jane back. I'm just getting Timothy and Sarah back. And you'll see for Timothy, I'm actually getting no value return, but I am getting the key re retrieved because um, Timothy doesn't exist. So it will create that as an entry here. And if you wanted to populate that with something, so say any of these nulls that came through, I want to fill them in with the value 23. We could use our fill operator. So remember, we did see that in a previous module, but to refresh yourself, um, we can hop over to our reference card and go to fill. And you see here, it's this fill operator. So any nulls, on the right hand side are basically replaced by the value you pass it on the left hand side so that's all we're doing there okay and then finally to append to a dictionary works the exact same as how we update a dictionary so we've seen this before in how to update a dictionary so the difference being um when we have the dictionary and the value doesn't exist it will add a new row so you see here i've got dictionary there was no entry for tim and then i can add tim just using the explicit colon assignment here so I'm creating Tim map to the value 35 and I can also add in bulk so I can add more than one here. So adding Sally and Joe. And this looks the same as doing the update. So if we just change Tim to be 100, you'll see Tim has now gone from being 35 to 100. So they are exactly the same. Um, it just depends on whether you have that key value pair in there or not. And that will decide whether you're either updating the existing key or you're adding a new key. Okay, so final exercise um, here, add Tom and Brian's birth months to the birth month dictionary. And it wants you to add them as symbols this time. Okay, so try that and then I'll see you in our next video.